this is Sarah with Posh Pooch Designs and today's video I'm going to show you how to make the gingerbread v-stitch headband and ear warmer this this one here is stitched in our v-stitch and it makes it lots of fun when you add one row of white because it looks like the frosting we added some little buttons and a little bow for the face. Now you can stitch it like this with two stripes of two different colors or you can stitch one like this. And this one we changed colors every two rows just so that it would look like peppermint or just striped. And this would be lots of fun to do in your school colors or your favorite team colors. Now um, if you make it like this one it's going to measure about three inches across but if you make it like this one it's going to measure about three and a half and so what you can do is I'll give you instructions when we get started on how to make it a little bit wider if you want it this one is a is a headband where this one is more of an ear warmer because it is wider also you can adjust it for any size head the pattern is written in two sizes. There's a youth size and an adult size. But you can, by just adjusting the amount of rows, adjust it to any size head, even down to a newborn if you want to. Now these are just stitched at a worsted weight yarn. And for today's demonstration, you can see we don't need very much. We're going to use this gingerbread brown because we're going to make one that looks like the gingerbread. And I'm going to use red and green and this little bit of a cream color for my gingerbread headband. We're going to be stitching with our eye hook. This is an I9 5.50 millimeter. You're also going to need a needle with a nice big eye because we're going to be sewing on our pieces. And of course you'll need a pair of scissors. So you can see it doesn't take much supplies. So go ahead and get those supplies together, and I'll see you in a couple seconds. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Now, what I wanted to tell you about adjusting for the size. If you want to make it wider, the beginning of the pattern, we're going to be chaining 13. And if you want it to go wider, you'll notice we have a double, two double crochets on each end with three, let me move it where there isn't any things with three V stitches in the middle. Now, if you want to make it wider, you'll need to add two stitches per inch. And those two stitches per inch will give you an additional V stitch. If you want to make it longer, just add another row per inch. And these are approximates because remember, everyone has a different gauge and stitches differently. The main thing is that you measure with your tape measure to make sure it's the length and the width that you want. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna make our slip knot, and we're going to chain 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So we've chained 13. We're going to begin working in the fourth chain from the hook because the first three chains will count as our first double crochet. So there's one, two, three, and then here's our fourth chain. We're going to double crochet, and just in case you're not sure what a double crochet is, you yarn over, one, two, three, go in the chain or stitch and pull up a loop, then yarn over. You go through the first two, and then you go to the second two. So our chain three here counted as our first double crochet, and then we double crocheted one. We're going to skip the next stitch. And then in the next stitch, we're going to stitch our first V stitch. And our V stitch is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So we're gonna double crochet, skip the next stitch, and then double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and the same stitch. So we have our chain three that counts as a double crochet, then we have a double crochet, we skip the next chain, and then we did a V-stitch in the next chain, 
double crochet, chain one, double crochet is our V stitch. And we're going to do this two more times. We're going to skip the next stitch and then in the next stitch we're going to place a V stitch. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And we'll do this again. Skip the next stitch and then in the next stitch we're going to stitch a V stitch. Double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. And then you'll have three chains left on your um, chain. And we're going to place a double crochet in those last two chains, skipping the next stitch. And my last one's pretty tight there. There we go. All right, so what we did, two double crochets, skip one stitch, two, I mean, uh, double crochet, chain one, double crochet in the next stitch for a V stitch. We skip the next chain, V stitch, skip the next chain, V stitch, skip the next chain, and then two double crochets in the last two. And this set us up for our whole pattern of our headband. So we're going to chain three, one, two, three, and we're going to turn. And so the rest of the pattern will be done exactly like this row. So you're going to put, we are chain three counts is our first double crochet, and then you're going to double crochet in the next stitch. Then you're going to place a V stitch in the space between the V stitch because the V stitch is a double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and we're going to place this V stitch right in that chain one space. So we're going to double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. And we'll do that in the next two V stitches for a total of three V stitches. Chain one, double crochet. In the next V stitch, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. And then we'll double crochet in those last two double crochets and chain three. One, two, three. So this is the pattern of our headband. You're going to repeat one double crochet in the first two double crochets, three V stitches, and then one double crochet in the last two double crochets, chain three, and turn. And if you added more width to it, you'll have more V stitches in the center because you always want to have two double crochets on each end because this gives us a nice edge like this one where we don't have to go back over and do a single crochet row. Now this one I did because in changing colors I pulled my my yarn colors along and I wanted to cover up those edges. But if you do it all in one color and you're real good about um, tying in those ends, then you won't have to put an edge on it. This two double crochet on the edges gives you a nice edge. Now to make the, the gingerbread man, you're going to do this for a total of 38 rows um, all together. Now, in order to put the stripe in, you're going to have to do 13 rows of the gingerbread brown. Here's where we began, and we're going to do 13 rows of the gingerbread brown. And then we're going to put in a white row. And then you're going to do the rows in between. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows in between, or depending on if it's a youth or adult, depending how far apart you want to put that. And then you'll do another row of the white, and then you'll do another amount on the back. Now this one is longer because this is an adult size, not a youth size. But the main thing is that you want this portion to be in the center of the hat. All right, so we're going to do 12 rows 
of our pattern of two double crochets at the beginning, three V stitches in the middle, and two double crochets on the end. And we'll do 12 rows for the youth size. And um, the adult size as well. And then we'll add more um, rows to the end for the additional rows that you need for the adult size. So we're going to do a total of 12 rows of what we just did. Two double crochets, three V stitches and two double crochets, chain three and turn. And we'll do this for a total of 12 rows and then we'll use our white to make a stripe that looks like our icing for our gingerbread man. So I have finished 12 rows of two double crochets, V-stitch, 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 and two double crochets. And now I'm ready to add in my white row. Now I'm not going to chain three at the end of this row because we're going to be adding our white yarn. And remember, you should always do your chaining, if chain two, three, or four, whatever you're doing after your color change, or you end up with that stitch being the wrong color. So we're going to add our white yarn in and chain three, one, two, three, and we'll stitch this row exactly like the other ones. The first chain three counts as our first stitch. Then we're going to double crochet in that next double crochet. We're going to do three V stitches across. Double crochet, chain one. Oops, ball of red yarn's rolling off. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet for a V stitch. Same thing in the next two V stitches. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet double crochet, chain one, double crochet, three V stitches. And then we're going to place one double crochet in those last two double crochets. There we go. And then we're going to tie off our white. We'll set the rest of our white aside for the other stripe. And we're going to go ahead and tie that off, like I said, and we'll weave that in later. Now we're gonna come back over here where we left our brown yarn off. And all we're going to do is we're gonna go right up in that chain three and we're gonna hook that brown yarn up there and chain three. One, two, three. There we go. And then we're gonna turn over and do exactly what we've been doing. Chain three counts as our first chain three. Then we double crochet the chain three counts as our first double crochet. Of course it counts as a chain three. <laughs> it counts as a double crochet. Then we double crocheted and then our three V stitches. One more. And I really think that it looks so cute with the one stripe in there because it gives it the look of icing like a gingerbread boy. Then we're going to double crochet in those last two double crochets. And then later when we're finished with our headband, we'll come back in and we'll weave these ends in with our needle. And you'll just thread those on your needle and just go right in those stitches. Like that. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. It'll go right in those stitches. Now I usually wait till I'm done, but I wanted to show you how simple it is. Just make sure you stay in the white because the white will show through if you try to weave in through the, the brown or your other colors. And then you can see it looks really pretty. Looks like the icing on the gingerbread boy. So we did our white stripe. Then we did nine rows of brown again. And we're going to do another white stripe. 
Get that out of there. Add our white back in. Chain three. One, two, three. And we'll do it exactly like we did the other one. Double crochet. Oops, looks like I got a split there. There we go. All right, double crochet in the next double crochet. Then one V stitch in the next three V stitches. Or however many you have. Now, if you widen it, remember you'll have more V stitches. So there's our three V stitches. And then one double crochet in the last two double crochets. And we're going to do this exactly like we did with the first stripe. We're going to cut that off. Put that back in there. Tie that off. Then we're going to turn it around, move back over here. Go in the top of our chain three, pull up that brown, and chain three. One, two, three. Then we'll turn and continue on with our double crochet, three V stitches, and double crochet. Two double crochets at the end. There we go. And this is where that if you need additional length is where you will add it. So it's a good idea to measure your headband at this point and see how long it is. And then you'll know how many more rows to do for your length. And just because it says youth or adult, you may have a bigger or smaller head than what the pattern calls for. <clears throat> for the youth, you should have a total of 38 rows. For the adult, you should have a total of 44 rows. Now, I have a little bit smaller head, so I actually make mine about 40. And, the, and this is what you'll do because you've counted up here, you've counted up all the way up, and then you just add additional rows until it's the length that you want it. So continue to do your additional rows until it's the length that you want it. And then I'll show you how to put it together um, into a headband. But before we sew it together, I'm gonna show you how to put the face and the buttons and the eyes on. Because it's a lot easier to sew your pieces on like this before you sew it closed because um, it makes it a lot harder to sew underneath and stuff. So go ahead and stitch as many rows as you need for the length that you need and then I'll show you how to make your buttons and your bows and add them to your headband. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to make this little bow to put on your headband. Really simple. We're going to make a slip knot and chain 11 Then we're going to place one single crochet in the second chain from the hook and in each chain across. So here's our first chain, here's our second chain. So we're going to put one single crochet in each single crochet across. This will give us a total of 10 single crochets. Then we'll chain one and turn. And we'll do this for two more rows so that we have a total of three rows of single crochet. So now I have three rows of single crochet, 10 stitches along. And I'm going to tie this off. I'm 
Now I'm going to need to weave those two ends in. Right now I'm just going to fold them behind. And the way you make the bow <clears throat> is you just cut a string, you know, 12 or however long you need it. And we're going to pinch the center up in the center of our bow. And we're going to wrap this yarn around that bow. And then we're going to tie a knot in the back. And just pull that in. And I tie it a couple of times just so that it's going to stay secure. And make sure you take a second or two and weave in these extra pieces of yarn. Because you want a nice tidy appearance. I'm going to fold them and turn it over. And there's our little bow. And you just use these two little strings to attach it onto your headband. And you do that with your needle. I'm not going to do it right now because I've got all these strings I need to tie in. So I'm going to tidy this up and then sew this onto my headband so that you can see how it looks. And you just use your needle and sew it on. So I tidied up my bow, got all my ends weaved in, and then I used my needle and I whip stitched around and then tied it here in the back so it would stay put. Now if you want to tack the edges down, you can do that too, um, and that'll make it stay put. Now the next thing I want to show you is how to make the cheeks and the buttons. They're made exactly the same. You can do them out of whatever colors that you want. I'm going to do, show you how to do it in green because I'm going to do my buttons in green. We're going to make a slip knot. We're going to chain three, one, two, three. And then we're going to place five single crochets in the second chain from the hook. So we're going to count one, two, and then we're going to place five single crochets in that same stitch. There's three, four, five. And then we're going to join to that first single crochet and tie off. And give yourself a little bit of yarn on the long end in order to have something to sew on with. So we have a little circle. We have a little hole in the middle which does not look tidy. So we're going to use the other end to close that circle up. So we're going to put it on our needle. And this is the back side of the circle. And we're just going to go around those stitches that we just made in a circle. And as we stitch, we're going to gently tug on that. And you can see the hole is closing. And it also weaves in our yarn for us. There we go. Nice little tug on that. And clip that off. So now we have a little button with the string, that one's sticking out, <laughs> that we need to sew on. And so all you do is decide where you want to place your buttons. And um, this one's going to go right here even though my stitching isn't done. But I'm still going to show you how to do it. So I need to get the rest of my headband finished up there. You're going to center it. And then you're just going to go in and out with some stitches. You're going to go around the edge of the circle. Now button placement, of course, is totally up to you. You don't have to put three buttons. You can put two. Or you can actually use real buttons, and that would be really cute too. You can use real buttons for the cheeks on the little face also. It's totally up to you. So I stitched around the outside, and I'm going to turn it over, and I'm just going to weave that in, making sure I stay behind that button because I don't want it to show in the brown portion of my yarn. One way, then go back the other. There we go. And snip that off. Now, your headband will be longer, and you'll... Mine's starting to come undone there. Your headband will be longer, and you can put as many buttons as you like. I'm going to put three green buttons here and then I'm going to use this cranberry for the cheeks. And the next thing I'm going to show you is how to embroidery on the little face. 
All right, so I'm going to show you how to put on your little embroidered face. What I do is I go to the center of this white icing V-stitch and I count up two and I come up underneath at the in the top of that V-stitch. I don't make a knot, I just let my yarn hang like this. And you can see on this one the, the, how the mouth is stitched. It's kind of a V. And so that's what we're going to do. And so I'll go from this V stitch to this one over here. But I don't want to make that long of a stitch. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to come up. And remember, don't pull your stitches too tightly because when your hat stretches, you don't want your stitches to pull. Okay, so basically I'm just going to make three stitches for the side of the mouth. And it really is all a bunch of eyeballing. So there's my one side. And now I want to try to match that with three stitches on this other side. And I think I need to go up just a little bit. One thing also to remember, make sure you go in the stitches, not the holes in between, or your stitches might come out. All right, so there I've got my mouth on. And we need to do the eyes. And all I do for the eyes is I just make a couple of straight stitches. Like that. <laughs> Uh, be careful not to tilt your eyes because if you tilt them, they might look mean. As I did that on, on one of my um, coasters I was making for someone and, and my friend's like, um, are you mad at me? <laughs> so make sure your eyes go up and down and not cr tilted sideways. There we go. All right, so that's how we do the eyes and the mouth. We'll just turn it over. And we'll just weave that in a little bit. I just kind of wrap around those stitches. I want them to stay put. But they still need to have a little bit of stretch because you don't want your stitches to pull when you're wearing your headband. And then we have this other piece here that we need to weave in a little bit. And I'll just go in the back just a little. We want that to stay put. All right, now the last thing that you need to do is you need to make two pink ones or whatever colors that you want and embroidery those on the face and they're done exactly the same. <clears throat> I made four buttons here, um, different colors to match and the two cheeks are made exactly the same as the, the way I showed you how to make the green button and you just place those on and sew that exactly the same as well. And that's how the gingerbread hat is made. Now, once we put all the pieces on, we need to sew it together. And although this one is not finished, I'm going to show you how to do it. And then I'm going to come back and finish it. I pulled out my one stitch on the end. All right, once you finish all your pieces, even though this one's not complete, you're going to put the two ends together with the ends, uh, the outside on the inside. And then you'll put just put your two ends together. And you're just going to go through both edges and slip stitch closed. Make sure you grab both stitches and you slip stitch loosely. You don't want to slip stitch tightly because if you do, your, the end of your headband will be all puckered. And you do this all the way across, tie off, and weave in your end. And let me show you this one. Here's the inside. We slip stitched across. I tied a knot and then wove the end in and it came out a little bit, but that's okay. It's going to stay put. And then you flip it out onto, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> you flip it over onto the right side. And then here's your headband. And this one here is done exactly the same as far as the stitching. We changed rows every two rows for the red. 
and I went ahead and put a single crochet edge all the way around both sides because when I changed colors I didn't cut my yarn and I had yarn that I had pulled along and I wanted to cover it. If you want to single crochet around this one, you can. It's your headband. Just make sure you do it loosely so that it has stretch. And that's pretty much how you make these headbands. They're super easy, super fun to wear, and they're great for children to adults. And just by changing the colors, you can personalize them. And, and they're, just, they're just lots of fun.